When this field first got started 20, 25 years ago, the information we learned about the disease was from people who died with severe end-stage disease. And the brain changes that occurred were immensely disappointing, immensely uh, devastating in terms of saying, if I had a medication, I could help this person. And most of the early researchers said, there's no way a simple pill will help somebody at this stage. But those were the early days when the brains we got were the brains of people who had had the disease for a long time. With the advent of the research operations and the large-scale clinics and a lot of dedication from people who have essentially decided that their cause is to help this disease, we now began to get a better idea of what the brain looked like at an earlier stage. That's what led to neuroimaging to say if we know what the brain looks like in the early stage in someone who died, not quite as severe, then we know how to devise imaging techniques that would let us look at this and see what people's status was while they're still alive. That combined with a lot of new technology, especially regarding computing and imaging and new advances in what we call radioactive tracers, the things that actually light up the brain in certain kinds of scans, has led us to the point where we can see the changes in Alzheimer's disease even before people ever get their first problem with memory. Those people are obviously our targets. We are not guaranteed to get the disease. If you have evidence of plaque, for example, in your brain and, and your thinking is entirely normal, but you are certainly at much greater risk than someone who has a negative scan. So when you use medications, for example, in research that have a bit of a greater risk, they're new drugs, they may have side effects we don't know about, you'd like not to have to give that to anybody who is highly likely not to develop the disease. You want to give it to the people who are going to develop the disease or who have a very, very high probability that they'll develop the disease. So imaging will be diagnostically specific, we think, and it's highly likely that we will be, begin to use it for screening just like we use lots of other things for screening.